Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, your Florida electrician. I just wanted to do one more walkthrough before they put insulation. Um, for you guys that's never done this before, I wanna show you, you know, how and why we staple things the way we do and how you can do things nice and neat. Um, some people do spiderweb wiring, they just throw the wires across the roof and it, it, looks like, it looks like ass, man, when you can make it look nice and neat. Uh, yeah, some people are like, oh, you never see it again. Well, you know what? Whoever goes up in the attic may see it again and you know that you did a shit job if you throw it like that. So let me show you around. All right, so as far as the stapling, we took a lot of care to staple the Romex. Uh, it is stapled probably within every three feet or four feet. The max for Romex is four and a half feet between staples. See, look at that. That's way less than four and a half feet because it's a heavier wire and I didn't want it sagging. You wanna staple the wire in the center or towards the top on a rafter so the drywall guys don't hit it. And I try to avoid bringing wires over the top of the rafters where they could be stepped on. Um, I got my home runs going through there into the old part of the house. But anyway, as far as stapling, try to staple it before it goes down into the wall. And then when it does go down the wall, um, and you can go down about a foot, maybe a little bit more, staple it in the middle. You, if, you're, if you're within an inch or so of the, inch and a quarter or so of the outside where they're gonna staple, uh, where they're gonna put drywall, uh, they're gonna get, you're gonna get dinged or it could hit with the drywall screw. So you wanna staple it in the middle like that, nice and neat, up and over within 12 inches of your, your electrical box. Okay, this one I ran straight down. I didn't want to have to run this one up and over that box, so I just ran it around. All right, let's see. We have some wires going here, stapled to the top. Try to figure out where the wires are going. You can staple over the other one, up to three. Up to three wires under a staple, at least here. Um, try to drill. You know, towards the right in the middle of the of the wood, of course. And if you have to, if it's too close, you have to put a nail plate. If it's too close to the outside. Staple it if there's blocking there. Staple it on the blocking, then come down, staple it. See, I don't need any staples here because it's in the middle, and it goes towards the outside wall. But still, I can't staple it on the outside wall. Um, this is for a serving station. We're gonna have uh, whatever we decide to put there. Um, popcorn machine or rice cooker, coffee maker, um, place for all that kind of stuff, sink, washer dryer. But as, anyway, the point is, look at the ceiling. Look where almost all the home runs are coming. These are actually travelers, three wires, going to my other gang, my four gang. It's gonna be four ways in there. And then it comes out again, and you can see where the wires are stapled nice and neat. Uses a little bit more wire, but it sure to hell looks more professional. And then it comes over to here where we have another four gang. Nice and neat. So if you're gonna end up with more than three wires under a staple, you can put two, and then you can use some zip ties off of that first staple put two more zip ties, two more like this. The idea is, is you wanna keep these wires in the wall long enough for them to get the drywall on and where they're not gonna hit the wiring or pinch it. So it takes a little bit more time doing it nice and neat. But I'll tell you what, it sure pays off. All right, these little voltage wires here, probably a subwoofer and a speaker wire. Don't put them right on top or even next to your regular line voltage stuff, okay? You wanna introduce, even though they're shielded, you're just gonna introduce noise and it's gonna be forever. You're gonna wonder why you got a humming or some other thing, all right? You can always put these wires in the wall like that, but think, keep stuff away from the electrical, but don't put it out in the middle where somebody can walk. The installation guy, installation guy is gonna come blow insulation. I don't want him stepping on my stuff. It's gonna damage it. You see, there's a, there's a HDMI cable. You see, I got it on the side of the rent run, not over. 
Nice and neat because he's gonna walk through there probably in a chase down the wall and into where another TV is gonna be. I got, they put blocking there. I can't later ever get anything down this wall. So I put this chase here. If I ever need to pull something else or pull this out and pull something in, I just tie it onto this one, pull it in and off we go. Cause this is screwed. I can't get anything down that wall anymore, gone. So I had time, you think ahead. Got some sconce lights, but yeah, always wiring nice and neat. See, I got three here. That's okay, I got three. And then I put another one and later on added another one. It's okay to do it like this. Nice and neat, only three wires per hole. When you make a hole in the top plate, three wires. And again, don't put your low voltage, don't put your low voltage in the same hole with your electrical. Okay, you wonder why you're gonna have buzzing? Well, there you go. Look at this hot mess. Man, we got some serious wires going up through here. Look at that. You can always staple it up towards the top. There's no drywall going on the top. Don't staple it on the top. Staple it up towards the top. Okay, look at all these wires coming down. We get probably, this is probably power in and out for this light box. Um, well, actually it's only for the sconce light. These are all four ways, okay? They're getting power from the kitchen. This is the, uh, the room, but these all are gonna have power from the kitchen. But because I have one single switch here, the sconce light, I can't get power from here. It's not gonna be constant. I had to pull power and then run a switch, leg over and up to my sconce lights and then out. Anywho, uh, I have another video for that. But look, nice and neat. I have so many wires here. I ended up putting it kinda like that in the middle. It's still good, a little risky, a little risky here. But I had so many wires, I, I doubled them up. I want it to look good too. Come on, check that out. All right, there's no reason why electricians can't do this. There are a lot of electricians that do do this. Um, they make it look good, they take their time. We are professionals, people, and that's what we get paid for, okay? Um, do not put wiring in these creases. You see that crease? Okay, some inspectors believe that's gonna settle someday and it's gonna start crushing or pinching the wire. Do not do that. You can always leave it out an inch or so. Leave it nice and neat like that. Nice, neat, workmanlike manner. It's actually in the code book. Workmanlike manner. That means you're a professional, you know what you're doing. So I put a nail plate there because I was too close to the outside. I don't want to chance it. Um, more wires coming down for floodlights. I'm gonna have a switch here for all my floodlights. They're gonna be on all the time anyway, most likely. Um, but if I hear something, I can shut it off for a second, turn it back on and the floodlights will stay on. I like that. Um, outside outlet here, I got five of them going in. We're gonna have plenty of outlets for the outside. Nice and neat. Future hanging lights over the nightstands. I mean, this is, this is gonna be nice, man. Took my time, tried to do a good job. Another outlet. But this is how you do it. Again, nail plates. You don't want your wiring to get hit. It's not worth it. Okay, you can staple over another staple. Don't staple right over it. Leave, leave it some space so this actually has some, some room to breathe. I know it sounds like I'm patting myself on the back, but I'm proud of the work I do. It's nice and neat and it always works. That's the other side of this. This looks like ass in here, but basically this is for the closet and attic. I don't want to pull chain. I have to go up in the attic and pull the chain. Um, if I want the attic light on, I'm going to put it on down here and I'm going to go up the attic. And there's one right there. I want to be able to see what's up. There's one there and there's like another one over here somewhere. Yep, I want to be able to see what's up. If I go up in the attic, I want to be able to see. Um, 
some LED disc lights. Even out here, put a fan, and I have the boxes already mounted. All right, the junction, but this is gonna be shitty to try to mount these things later when you cut a hole in the drywall. So I have them already mounted, and I'm taking note of where I planned on putting these. So at trim time, I'm going to mark out my center and cut the hole, and these should re reach. We should be good. Floodlight. All in all, this uh, this is coming out super nice. See, I didn't have to do it like this. Yes, I need a, I need a staple right here within 12 inches, but I didn't have to bring it down more to make it almost even with this hole. But you see how nice and square that looks? It just looks so much better. Same here. I could have just not put these staples and and went up like this. Yep, it works. Looks like hell, but it works. Nice and neat, man. Nice and neat. I even got a floor box. UF wire over to a floor box for where we're gonna have the, probably a powered couch or whatever, recliner or whatever. Trying to think ahead. Subwoofer over there in the corner. I got a outlet right there for the subwoofer. I ain't playing when I do this stuff. Some more LED disc lights fan. I want it to be nice. Switches for the uh, for the lights above. That's an outlet for the TV. This is going to be the entertainment center wall. That one's going to be fun. I got to take a bunch of measurements because those speakers had to be cut out of the wall there, the openings. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to show that one.